right. Welcome. Hey. Carrie. Hi. Stoked to have you, man, to the Two Fun Guys podcast. Producer, musician, songwriter, tech tech nerd as well. You've had a long, very long tech career. And uh, dude, we're excited to talk to you and, and dive into like your story and and how you've melded all these different things together from tech to music, because that's a fascinating uh, you know, connection point. So I'll let you kind of take the wheel real quick and tell us a little bit about who you are and, and your story, man. Yeah. Well, first, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here on y'all's podcast. Mm -hmm. I know you and I have met at the gym and uh, chopped it up a little bit, but um, uh, I go by Carrie, I'm, or uh, AKA King Carrie, when I'm doing my music thing or DJing out. Um, uh, many know me as a DJ in Austin, but I have like leaned more into the title of just a general creative. Like uh, I have um, over the last two decades, primarily had my hand in being a musician and producer and songwriter first and um, specializing in like, uh, mainly playing gu guitar and bass, but also sound design, synthesis. And um, with that, you know, I've, I've kind of amassed a number of creative skill sets over my time and uh, uh, also very passionate about giving back to others um, do, through teaching, mentoring, mm -hmm. and things like that. And, you know, all of that kind of merged together with my um, background and passion in tech, too. Um, a kind of funny journey of the, all that merging together, but it's kind of where I I am right now, just seeing myself as a creative entrepreneur. Awesome, dude. So, I mean, you have a wide array of things that you do in the music world. What instruments do you play? Uh, I guess, yeah, that's the question. I know you're also pr a producer and a DJ, but I guess specifically instruments, what do you play? Uh, guitar, I would say, is my main, your main instrument of choice, my main weapon of choice. Um, I like to play around and dabble with every, ev yeah. everything, just being, uh, you know, when I hear music, I, I usually hear a composition, not just like a singular instrument. So I try to play around, uh, my half good drummer <laughs> and, uh, you know, mess around with different percussion. And I think uh, also I just into like worldly sounds, um, being first generation American with a father who was a musician. Um, I heard lots of different styles of music and it always piqued my interest on mm -hmm. where sounds come from, the various instruments that make them, things like that. How did you get into electronic? Brent and I were talking about this yeah. on the way over here. Everybody- well, yeah, all, yeah. Well, Also, what do you spin? That, Typically, that, you spin everything. I'm glad you asked that. So, you know, uh, uh, you and I were, were, have talked about, you know, my new DJ YouTube mm -hmm. uh, uh, channel, which I call Sunday Sessions. Yeah, everybody check it out, Sunday Sessions, dropping new new stuff every Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, for the, I think really that show is a is about a love letter to, to the DJ, right? Um, there are more more now so than ever there are more people djing uh -huh. which is amazing and um showing uh that there are various facets of djing and i think that's what's important uh to know that there are various schools of djing whether you want to be a turntablist or whether you're in a, a, a house uh -huh. um even a, even the uh manufacturers are coming out with all sorts of different forms of mixers to cater to the DJ. Like yeah. Pioneer released this new awesome rotary mixer that I thought is cool. I haven't seen one of those for a long time and they were really big in earlier decades, like the seventies. But um, for me, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I'm really into electronic music. I was born in the Mecca hip hop, Queens, New York. Um, really into uh, all forms. So. In, these days, I would just consider myself a hybrid DJ. I like try to intentionally juxtaposition like different forms and styles mm -hmm. to make just people uh, have fun. I might be trying to make them dance. I might be trying to pull from their nostalgia mm -hmm. from childhood. So I, I try to do all of, the above, all of the above, just make sure people are having a good time. Right. If you had to pick a genre to DJ, if it was like, here's some decks, just spin whatever makes you feel good, what would you do? Yeah. I, if I, I would say you can, you can rest assured catch a hybrid of like boom bap hip hop being a, a kid from New York. Um, 
Uh, my beats have to be gritty. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might hear, hear some bars, but I also just, as I talked about being a child just exposed to music all over the world, my, my ears will uh, be attracted to the instrumentation first. So a lot of times it's instrumental, uh, chill. Uh, uh, I love uh, a lot of British music, drum and bass, grime, uh, uh, bass music all over the bud, dubstep, all, all of all of that. And it's so funny. I think it comes from the bl blend of that Eastern European and Caribbean diaspora that happens in that area. And now you even have uh, Afri Africa and all of their uh, sound of uh, electronic music that's getting a lot of attention really? right now, just melding over into this like Eastern European section. And that's where I, I tend to sit a lot. What is, yeah, what kind of electronic music is coming out of Africa? What's the style? Um, well, you have the I'm a piano, uh, Afro beats. Um, okay, yeah. You have, uh, and in the South London section, there's, they, it's always been like jungle drum and bass right. that uh, has continuously for decades been like a popular genre, but it's particularly getting uh, popular again here in the States. Like where I really started, like, like I was, I started getting obsessed with like drum and bass, and uh, even that that evolved into dubstep and the earlier jungle form was like late '90s, early 2000s, and that's right about the time I started like taking approaching DJing seriously. Uh, so I'm gonna age myself here. I graduated high school around '99, and that's the that's around the the same time I got my first set of turntables and. Mixer bought it used. There wasn't a DJ controller mm -hmm. in sight, but that wasn't really a thing on Do the market. Do you remember what you got? Uh, yeah. First mixer? Yeah. Um, so I got two techniques. Nice. 12 tens. SL 1200 series are the best uh, uh, turntables. And even to this day, I think it's, some may look at it as a no fault. Those things are built like a tank, so they last forever. You can find a used pair, um, probably under a thousand dollars, between five to a thousand dollars, and you know most, I would say, professional turntables that are sold new on the market retail starting at a thousand dollars. So that that's kind of a fault to building such great hardware yeah. for them. You can jump on eBay and no find obsolescence. Some. So pro tip, pro tip. Um, uh, but got two of those. They were definitely used by a previous DJ because they were modified with some really strong RCAs and no ground wire and a Vestax two channel mixer. Because you know where I come from, I was already living in Texas, and you know I equally lived uh, at this point most of my life here in Texas. But coming from New York, it was all about uh, block parties, turntablists. Uh, and when I say turn to the list, that's a DJ that will do scratch, juggling, all the trickery, all that stuff, which I, I, I will also go on record saying you don't have to do that to be a, a DJ, but that was kind of the school I came from. And, uh, at that time there was, uh, what we know now for DJing. Um, the DVS or digital vinyl solution, meaning you can use your computer and software to DJ that hadn't existed yet. Yeah. That was like just kind of on the horizon. So you had to learn from, uh, buying lots of records, mm -hmm. um, mixing, cueing your records, beat matching w using the pitch control. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful that that's the era that I came from that I had to learn. Yeah. It's, uh. It's because the way I've seen it now is like, it's, it's become very easy to do the basics. Like you have, you know, you have a sync button if you want to use it. You have all these different tools on like a, let's say a Pioneer CDJ that takes away the gritty work of an old school DJ. And I originally learned on vinyl like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but last time I touched vinyl was 10 years ago. So I like, I forgot all of it and I've just gone, you know, the, the digital route since then. But I think what the new digital stuff allows you to do is you have so much more capability than you did on, on older gear. Like you have all these new effects and different things because you're not focused on 
like making sure that you, you, have, you don't have to spend 30 seconds trying to match a beat. Like you can just get it done almost instantly. And then you can use that time to do something even more creative. So it opens up the, the gateway for even more creativity. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, I, that is probably the biggest reason why I think, um, you know, when I started Sunday sessions, I, after leaving my career at the office job in Intac, um, I, what, I I already had been on this journey of like trying to push myself to be a little bit more um, habitual about practicing and DJing. Mm -hmm. I probably had been a little removed from it for about the last five to six years. Um, you know, with career, um, life, relationship, everything, uh, taking uh, uh, the primary seat to uh, going out and DJing. Um, but the when I started Sunday session, it was just for me. It was a selfishly for me to document my journey of practicing and mm -hmm. falling it back in love with the art of DJing. But then I uh, quickly realized like, you know, I've, over the 10 plus years of like DJing, I've met so many amazing people and DJing and I, from every one of them, I feel like I, I get a little piece of another thing I can incorporate to what I do, which just feels like me leveling up. And I think it's not just because um, I'm getting these little tidbits, it's because of the network of people and community I, I built, which I think is so important. So as I took this journey and started falling in love with the art of DJing again, I was like, well, wait a minute, this is, I love all schools of DJing. I. I, I know we have like disgruntled DJs out there that are like, sing button effects, yeah. software. <laughs> like, you know, honestly, like the, the the episode I'm about to post with my friend, uh, Hirba Melita, um, she's a dope female DJ. She's she's a bit younger, but she's out there doing it. She like leads a, a, a Latina led uh, female based collective called Flower Pot, hmm. uh, Flower Pot Collective. And, um, she's also creating spaces for, not, uh, the people that she wants to see around her. She's, uh, really an advocate in the BIPOC community. She, uh, uh, and one of the, my favorite things that I loved about her is that she embraces learning DJing on various types of equipment and gear. Cause I like asked her, well, what do you want me to set up or what do you do? what do you want to do? And she's like, I just want to spend some time learning your, the way you would approach DJing. I want to play in your controller, play on that. And she's like, I, I do that intentionally because it forces me to learn other ways of DJing, which I love. Cause that's like what I think I naturally do too, but not a lot of people do. Like some people are, I'm a house DJ, play CDJs. Right. This is what I do. This is the format I do. And that's it. Right. Um, and I uh, think that um, now that technology has, um, you know, I would say this over any other in uh, any other instrument like guitar or whatever. Like um, a lot of those disciplines in music, um, technology will influence them, but the change of what it means to be a guitar player. Um, from today, from 10 years ago to 20 years ago, I don't think changes quite as drastically as what we've seen in DJing. Um, the technology has like come in and uh, kind of changed the game so much of what it is to be a DJ. And we're seeing that from the girl that's being re-memed on tic uh, from TikTok over and over. The, 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 uh, uh, I'm not sure if you uh, where what I'm talking about. Have you? But have you seen on like TikTok and Instagram that girl that makes the comment and she's like crying and going, "What do DJs even fucking oh, do?" Oh yeah, yeah, right. And it's <laughs> just that. like grown into this big viral meme of everybody remixing right. her or DJing. That is that is kind of where we are today. Like uh, the idea of being a DJ can be so many different things as well, because. In essence, I might have said, well, that might not be DJing. That's producing and like editing her voice. Or some people were literally taking her voice, sampling. Like scratching it onto a record. Yeah, exactly. So the idea of today being a DJ could be so many different mm -hmm. things. And I'm just embracing them all right now. I just. Yeah, especially as technology advances, it's going to be wild because it's like a m multiple 
portals opening up and expanding more because it's just going to become more and more limitless of the shit you can do with yeah. sounds and technology. And it, as these tools advance, the sound and experience, like if you went to a show like an like an underground rave or whatever, the way they mixed, like to some extent, like could had limits. Mm -hmm. But yeah. like now you can see a show, even if it's just like a mainstream electronic artist, you're like, what the fuck? The editing is absolutely insane. Like I'm watching some crazy Hollywood movie mm -hmm. the way like that Zed's thing. It's like, it's kind of cheesy, but like how he edit. Now that that's not possible in the nineties. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> like you're like, so you're like, what am I even watching? Right. It's incredible. Uh, 100%. And it could go anywhere and whatnot. And yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute mind fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And even you, you can see it in uh some of what we uh our ears are prone to let's just take somebody like uh who i greatly admire skrillex right like his uh his sound and from if you go back all the way to his first ep at skrillex mm -hmm. um has greatly evolved from what it is today but i've yeah. i've seen him like that even funny story I, i've I uh, seen him met him while I was uh, touring, playing uh, in a rock band, um, and he was Sunny Moore back then. He was Sunny Moore back then. He wasn't uh, known as Skrillex yet. What year and is this? What'd you say? This was like early two thousands, okay. um, two thousand five, between two thousand five to two thousand seven, around there, somewhere around there. I was in a uh, touring with a indie rock act called the Panic Division. Um, I was, uh, doing a lot of, I was playing keys live with that band, uh, since, um, uh, that band, uh, not only was a guitar rock driven band, it had a lot of, it had a lot of hybrid influence from, from 80 synth rock and stuff too. And I was doing a lot of that on stage. And, you know, I remember playing, uh, uh, certain legs of the warp tour where they, uh, you, just a afterwards you would see just tons of band and i remember seeing from first to last that was the band that sonny was in at the time and you know definitely a front man and um, um from what i heard just from other mutual friends and stuff is that you know he had to take a back seat to that because uh uh he was uh developing some issues with his vocals mm. and uh that led him into uh the uh, I've, uh, you know, don't call me on this, but I've heard him say, uh, I've heard others say something about if he kept up with that lifestyle, he would certainly lose his voice, which led him into, uh, I think depression and then finding a Mac mm -hmm. broadband. And then that led to what we now know as Skrillex. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think also if I had to guess just cause I was heavily into electronic music production too, like where he entered into to that and what you can hear in his sound is like a m microcosm of a bunch of different styles and influences and genres. And I, I, that's why I really enjoy his music. I feel akin to that. And even where his music has evolved to right now, it's like a micro sampling of multiple different mm -hmm. uh, genres. And I think that's what we're seeing a lot with technology and where it's taking us today. like, um, I think of like acts like Justice as well, where yeah. they're like hi hybrid Michael of sampling from various things. It could be hip hop, t uh, disco, um, dubstep, all of the above. It, the world is our oyster and we're just taking that palette and making something new from it. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff I really love. Yeah, like a good example too is like Fred again. He's yeah. like bringing drum and bass mm -hmm. with the hip hop, but then like interesting vocals and melodies and you're like crossing over and I bet people that would never go to a drum and bass show are all of a sudden yeah. in the mix in a crowd and then he just drops hard drum and bass mm -hmm. yeah. and they're like oh mm -hmm. new part of the brain unlocked I, I love that it's like a Trojan horse because an artist oh, will have like huge. one song that's maybe a little chiller and everybody's like oh I love it then they go see his show and they're like surprise bitch you're getting dubstep you're getting drum and bass <laughs> you're getting jungle mm -hmm. and they just hit yeah. you with everything and if you're a good yeah. DJ it like it doesn't matter what you play if you play good music and you bring people on that journey they'll get down yeah they will get down yeah. and like if you can bring them in like people just they have walls up to like oh, i don't like that sound i don't like this it's like well maybe you're just listening it to on the radio you're not in the right atmosphere to actually be receptive enough mm -hmm. to like feel mm -hmm. the energy of certain mm -hmm. kinds of music yep 
and I think the one thing I respect about two of the, the two of those guys is like, for example, I was watching something on Fred again recently, like, a uh, like one of his YouTube sets. And one of the things that I love the most about what he did in that set is, he, uh, he, he's not afraid to just stop like mid his set and, uh, just start doing some finger drumming routine. And like, <laughs> yeah. like, I think that's, uh, really awesome because I mean, I understand this because of like the earlier days of DJing. And even in, if we go back, like, uh, uh, in some air, in some forms of DJing, sometimes the DJ wasn't the center point of the show where you're focusing your eyes on them. Um, they're in charge of making sure that the dance floor is continuous. There's a vibe creator. Exactly. Yeah. You're not looking at the DJ. They're just there doing their job. Exactly. Exactly. They're there to do. And even if you take it back to the elements of hip hop, like we, uh, um, the DJ were taking the instrumental break section of early funk records and their job was to make sure it never stops. It just keeps going so that the break dancers can do their routine, all, all that. So they're like just trying to keep a continuous thing going. But now that uh, where we are with technology, um, the idea of what a DJ is, that line is always getting blurred. I love it. Um, and both these guys, I feel like they're, they all also bring in their, um, their background and influences from just being musicians as well. And there's something that I still see on the YouTube comments and something that I still see out there is like these uh, uh, musicians that try to go, well, you're just a DJ, you're just playing other people's music. And I'm like, Brody, you have no idea. That's why I brought up the conversation about like how guitar playing um, while technology evolves, um, the idea of being a specialist at, at your instrument right. or a musician doesn't change quite as frequently, but however, DJing is like that trajectory is going up yeah. and up. Well, it's like any instrument, right? Like mm -hmm. DJing, you can do a very simplistic, just, okay, bring in a simple beat, fade it in. Okay, cool. You could do that. And technically you're a DJ. And I think that's what people sort of perceive DJing is, uh, as a whole, but you can also just grab a guitar and play smoke on the water. And that's the same equivalent. Or you can be fucking riffing mm -hmm. some, some crazy shit and that's a whole new level. And you can do the same thing with DJing. Yeah. There's so many, they, you can go deep down the rabbit hole and create incredible sounds and incredible music. But to label it as just, oh, you're pushing buttons mm -hmm. is like is like saying a guitar player is just playing smoke on the water. Oh yeah. I mean, even when I picked up guitar early, early on, uh, entering middle school and high school, you know, with my dad being a musician, and him like, you know, uh, doing that professionally touring, playing bass with uh, a lot of different acts. Um, I remember when I really started taking guitar seriously, it was trying to push as far away from what my dad was into, uh -huh. like reggae and funk and, uh, and soul and stuff like that to finding like moving to Texas at an early age and finding metal and Pantera nice. and death metal, but at the same time, uh, taking from my influences being from New York and Caribbean and also having over here, like really being very interested in DJing, but never thinking that those two worlds could like right. merge in like late nineties, early 2000. And now there's like this dude, uh, I, I wish I remembered his, his name, but there's like this guy who's definitely like a metal head and uh, long hair, head banging all the time and is doing like heavy, like dubstep rhythm stuff, but incorporating what like a metal breakdown would be like inside of his, uh, inside of the way, the stylistically, the way he produces. And the same thing I see too with like guys we were just talking about, like Skrillex, Fred again, they're like, the DJing is the one school where you can juxtaposition, and this is where what I will always, I tell a musician that tries to give a DJ shit. I was like, bro, you can't, you can play covers, but you can't just to position a tune from right now to like, I don't know, the earlier 1900s and make them sound cohesive together. And that's the beauty sometimes of DJing mm -hmm. or re-editing and remixing it and trying to take the listener on this different journey. And that does require skill. Um, you have to understand music theory, syncopation, key, like all of yeah. all of the same things you would as a musician. I mean, 
do you have to i mean you you don't have to know all your chords playing guitar too yeah um but you know i think um hearing that same talk from like musicians say that oh djs aren't really musicians i'm like get the fuck out of here like um but that's that's me and that's why i find it important that i want to introduce people to like the different schools of what it means to be a dj too totally sunday sessions is just you playing or you have guests on great question um originally i just started the journey just thinking i would just it would just be me um but as i started um posting up like the first two uh sessions are just me djing um leaving fuck ups and everything and all in there um and like i said i selfishly just wanted to document my journey and whatever comes to that comes to that i'm not looking for all the follows and likes but then i would like share them with my friends or uh you know one of the things that i uh this journey has brought up for me that i often forget the best way to learn to dj is to surround yourself with other djs and play with them and um as i like invited one friend to come over um shout out dj D diggy dutch that uh that was episode number three um i quickly realized it's more uh, one i've just met an awesome network of people uh that i know i love within austin austin and i think has such a vibrant community of like uh great djs and culture here so i realized it was bigger than me really um and that's when i started like the conversation we're bringing up more the idea of being a dj has greatly evolved i want to be able to showcase other other forms other styles other people that are out there doing it and passionate about that and i also like i said the show it to me now has evolved into um a love letter to the dj so with each Sunday session, I'm also trying to showcase the personality of the DJ that's coming on by doing a little cinematic introduction to them before I introduce my guests. That's sick. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking sick. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what it can be and evolve. Uh, I think it's a great idea because I like that idea knowing like, dope, there's a mix that comes out on Sunday. Sunday, it's like you're just doing random shit. Maybe you got stuff planned, but maybe you just like go on a walk and you're like, cool, I'm just going to see what the fuck's on Sunday sessions mm -hmm. and just be open to like now if different DJs, different styles. I love that because it's like going to the record shop where you get CDs. You're like, I'm just going to pick some random shit and listen to it all the way through. And when you're just completely open-minded, you're like, yeah, let's just let it rip. Let's see where it goes. Yeah, which is kind of a dying thing nowadays. You I don't just so. go to a record shop or go to a no. you know, a music store and buy some CDs. You're like, oh, I like the album art here. Let's just see what that does. Now it's like, yeah. I'm only going to listen to stuff that Spotify recommends yeah. based on my previous listening. So then you get caught in this feedback loop of listening to the same stuff over and over and over again. And Sunday's a vibe. Mm -hmm. Sunday is a vibe. That's the time to experiment and listen to a Sunday. <laughs> Sunday's stuff. a vibe. Exactly, exactly. And there's a, like a whole trend of... Uh, uh, you know, I'm not alone in like a DJ's posting their uh, a mix on YouTube now, um, which is uh, it, it. It's actually kind of cool because while I do think listening to a DJ um, set takes you on an audio uh, auditory journey, and you yeah. know wherever the DJ is taking you, um, it's it's now. Uh, I love the trend and culture that having a visual. Uh, experience to complement that is important to the view too and i uh at first when i was trying to do it i was trying to own all of that and not uh, awkwardly trying to figure out what to do and then um i started remembering that early on for me like the way i really accelerated quickly as a dj was like ha inviting friends over uh starting a crew like uh, making a point to go to their place you know and um that's that's where i think the show will sit and probably differentiate it from other youtube channels that, uh, i see I, and i follow i follow a ton of them uh, you know of watching other djs mix every week but i i definitely want to have something where it's not just all about me and I think uh hopefully hopefully that's what the show achieves how many episodes have you done so far um glad you asked i've filmed a couple of them i i think uh I'm realizing because I've never um, disciplined myself to have the consistency of doing something weekly. 
and I definitely have fallen off on the, on the last uh, on the last couple of weeks. But it's okay because I also realized quickly that I need to build like a. They're all pre-recorded, so I'm building like a archive because it. Mm. I uh, quickly realized how much work um, was involved with the production if I wanted to not just show a DJ set, but a cinematic intro introducing you to the uh, DJ per personality. What does that mean, cinematic intro? Uh, it's just a, uh, if you think of it as, as I mentioned, a theme. Like a um, Shark Tank when they're like, this guy is from a small town. He has this business. <laughs> exactly. And, but like cooler, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and without the narration, um, I'm glad you uh, explained it that way because in a lot of ways, DJs are telling you a story without words, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And as I shared, the show is like my own, through my eyes, a love letter to the art of DJing. So I'm doing anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute of like getting you into their personality. Mm. Like, um, Sick, yeah. like with my friend, uh, Diggy Dutch, like before I had him come on, we were just talking about, uh, the first thing he asked me, like any, anyone does, uh, what, what type of format is the show or what are we doing? And I was like, buddy, if, if anything, I want my show to be, the hub where you feel free to experiment with whatever you like. So break out the stuff that you normally wouldn't feel like you could play at a gig. Mm. And so Diggy immediately was like, oh my that's gosh. That's the best shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, that's yeah. the best shit. It's yeah. so like, it's, especially nowadays, even bigger DJs when they play at a festival or a show, they play the stuff that people want them. And we just experienced this again at uh, Eclipse. We saw Zed's Dead play, love Zed's Dead, seen hundreds of times. Hundreds, <laughs> dozens of times, maybe. <laughs> I'm getting Wait, fair but, boy, yeah, exactly. Christ. I love Zed's Dead. <laughs> um, and you know, their set was cool. It was cool. It was the same Zed's Dead set that we've seen for a long time. And it's then like they a, played. Yeah, it's like a big festival, super entertaining. Wow, yeah. cool. Yeah, they had the great, you know, visuals. Did the whole like yeah. Zed's Dead baby did that thing. Cool. But then they played an after at just like a Burning Man art car. Where we stumbled upon. And we stumbled upon. Didn't even know. We were like. I think that's that's dead. And was just laying down the grittiest, our souls apart. nastiest, like old and school shit. And everyone in the crowd just like, you can see the spirits taking over. Like every, yeah. that's one of my favorite parts about when everyone is like on their own journey, dancing however they want. And you're like, this energy is so good. Yeah. And to he, me, it was just it was, throwing it down. It was the down. stuff he wanted to play and you could feel the passion, not the, my manager says I have to play this. Which or the is crowd still cool. Wants. It was but, still great. But, but like, there's a different feel. When it's from the soul, it just, it hits 100%. so much harder. Uh, what you guys are touching on too, you know, those are, those shows are always my favorite DJ sets. Like, uh, I, you, you just reminded me of like going to see a sold out show with the XX and then Jamie XX is playing, uh, an after party somewhere at a small club mm -hmm. and like, yeah, that's where you want to hunt down. Yeah. Up in past two o'clock feeling like just feeling his set. Like I'm in a trance, like, you know, or what, uh, watching disclosure play, uh, at the stage of ACL, their are a uh, huge production, uh, live show and you know at that time I think they're they were they weren't I can't remember if it was a Grammy award-winning album or it was at least nominated um, and then them going we're gonna do do, do this DJ uh, set somewhere and it just like got announced that night and then going yes this is the, dis the disclosure I'm here to see yeah. you know yeah yeah so same, I saw the same thing with you know you brought up Skrillex I saw Skrillex do the same thing in Seattle there's a club in Seattle called volume did you ever go to volume yeah. Yeah. So volumes, t tiny I little. Did, I like, trained the owner for a little bit. Oh, you did? The Vietnamese lady. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. So Skrillex had a huge show. And this is the time I met Skrillex. He uh, it was very brief, but he played the huge show and then went and played the small show and volume way better than the big show. Same thing with the Vici, rest in peace. So I'm play a huge show at Wamu and then got to see him. But like, there's like 50 people in volume just watching Avicii and he's just oh, tearing really? it up. I it went to one of so the private cool. shoot. Yeah. The, that's the best shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Amazing. And, yeah, you know, that that's kind of going, going back to the Sunday session. That's kind of like what I realized immediately I wanted to do is like, let like do, do this is just your homie Carrie. We're yeah. just like going to chop, chop it up, talk a little bit and play the music that we're feeling right now at the moment. So um, when I had Diggy on, the first thing he, he like goes, oh, man, I have the all these 45s I've been collecting and uh, swapping with friends and being past them that I haven't had a chance to play out. I'm going to bring those. And I was like, oh, oh, cool. Wait. And then he brings out this like 
awesome like 45 uh like box that had like a vintage kind of theme design to it and i was like whoa, whoa, whoa wait hold on i need to film you like going through this because he was talking to me about uh all the exclusive pressings of the 45s he had and they had like cool artwork on it nice. and some of them were written uh notes on the 45s like uh uh this is for you diggy from dj question mark you know and i was like so that was the cinematic intro i made nice. uh i like uh no words it's just uh i and i also i'm a coffee aficionado so i uh in every episode i'm making coffee for myself and the guests that comes on so that was the uh uh, intro I went with is me making coffee, Diggy getting ready for his day, digging his 45s, no words, just the music is talking. I'm playing a track in my kitchen as I'm making coffee to then just going on the turntable. That's sick. Yeah. It's like, we're kicking it on a Sunday and mm -hmm. you're like getting ready. You're kind of meeting him. And then you're like, all right, cool. Let's just hang out. I want to see what this guy plays when he drinks a cup of coffee. Yeah. I love that this is Tony on a cup of coffee set. Yeah, I don't drink coffee. So if you play me like some coffee, wrong, I'm going to go, hey, I'm gonna go so buck wild. Him on coffee would be a psychedelic renaissance. And I, <laughs> as I, in my mind, I was just like thinking, uh, like, how would I make Tony's cinematic intro if I had him on? Like, you know, so I, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to have this to. This is like, just like a random idea, but what if you did like a Sunday sessions at like Zilker and you film like five different sets in a row? That, it was like a little meetup kick it. That would be awesome, uh, you know, and that's I think the evolution of where where I w will want to take the show um, is like doing it in different unique spaces as well. Oh, cool! Um, I know people will probably get tired of the backdrop of my home at some point, and like uh, going into other people's spaces. One ep one episode um, I'm working on shooting is uh, one of the uh, one of my favorite DJs within. Uh, our Texas area and um, uh, lived here in Austin as well. And uh, one of the first DJs I followed just because I loved his uniqueness and his approach to DJing is uh, DJ Jester, the Filipino Fist. Uh, shout out, Mikey. Um, so uh, he uh, and I both grew up in San Antonio. And I remember. Um, like when I early on when I was learning, I knew that when I was learning the art of DJing again, uh, early 2000s, that I wanted to learn the art form of being a turntablist too, which um, here, unfortunately, at that time, there, there wasn't a large presence of that. Uh, you had your, your house DJs and stuff like that, that I knew um, from within the city, but uh, DJ Jester and another homie, um, DJ Prince Klassen, uh, who now lives in New York, um, started doing uh, like a scratch school section at the San Antonio Downtown Public Library. And that's like that's awesome. one of the first ways I had heard from it. And then going to see this dude play, he has a awesome unique way of just grabbing your childhood by the, <laughs> by the arm and like pulling that out. He will mix it. He's not ashamed to mix in his set like some play school record that and and put that in and go what, what am i hearing <laughs> and that um also totally makes sense on like why he went on tour with dj kid koala you know they're both asian and they both have like this unique way of approaching djing and um when i went uh I, me and him caught up realizing that we live like five minutes away from each other which we had no idea and i was sharing with him this story of like being young and getting into DJ and then seeing that flyer for his scratch school. And that was like how I got introduced to him. And we just caught up for dinner, catching up on life. And we ended up, he ended up going, yo, I want to take you to this dim sum place that just opened up and uh, let's just hang out and let's just make a Sunday out of it. And I'll show you like what I <laughs> like to do on a Sunday. And we ended up driving up North, going to H Mart, which I don't know if you're familiar with H Mart. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's like a big, uh, market, Asian mm -hmm. market area. I grew up going to Asian markets yeah. with a Vietnamese mom, man. I get it. Yeah. In Seattle, Asian stores everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, Jester's hilarious too. And then he was like, you know, honestly, this, this is my thing. I like going to H Mart and then I like going to the Savers and just thrift shopping and going and walking around. And we were in there digging through old records, eight tracks, uh, busted electronics. All, and it was such a good day of us kicking and, 
and vibing and cracking jokes and stuff that it uh we were like sitting in the car at one point and and he was like i was like man i just wish i had my camera rolling and he was like yeah you should have a camera like right here in the da dash it'd be like djs in car in cars and <laughs> drinking coffee or something yeah and i was like that's a brilliant freaking idea so um uh i'm already doing like these cinematic sequences and i already have been toying with this idea of wanting to vlog and stuff too um just never really had the courage to so um uh it dawned on me when specifically with his episode i think i'm gonna try like uh recording just us being humans and naturally we end up talking about djing music as well and then intercut that along within the dj set and see mm -hmm. Dude, how people sick. like it that's right that's, i want to watch it right now yeah <laughs> awesome this is kind of a hard pivot, but with your background in tech, I'm curious if you think AI is going to have an impact on on the DJ world, the production world, and how you see that playing yeah, out. Yeah, are you also afraid of creativity? That's the one fear we I always hear in the media. All like all the artists are going to go with the creativity is going to go like because it could do something so much better than anyone could ever produce, which I think is bullshit. But I'm there with you, man. Like, uh, is AI going to affect what we do within music, uh, as a DJ a hundred percent, like, um, it, am I of the school of thought of it being a negative thing? No, absolutely not. Like, uh, I think you, uh, uh, have to remember even when I started DJing, there was no DBS. So DBS stands for a digital vinyl solution. Uh, there was no Serato. There was no record box. Um, CDJs were a thing, but actual physical CDs, no USB stick. Mm -hmm. uh, and the LED, uh, the LED screen you see now certainly didn't have as much information. They were probably like little digital. Yeah, it was very pixelated. Yeah, Like exactly. a CDJ 800. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like a Tomagotchi? Yeah, so that's what it looked like. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It just said the BPM <laughs> and like the name of the track and like that was it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you know, um, that's technology too. Like, you know, that exactly. like allowed it, allowed uh, the idea of being a DJ taking us away from uh, DJing only having to be the needle stylist, the uh, records and kind of evolving what it means to be a DJ. And then along came the DBS and, um, and I remember uh, as that technology was debuting, the same talk we're hearing right now about AI is the same yeah. state. It's gonna ruin DJing to have uh -huh. <laughs> computers mm -hmm. involved. Exactly. And I remember my one of my favorite DJs to today um, and him coming from the school of being a turntable is uh, the holds the record for uh, the most consecutive wins as a DMC world champion. And DMC is oh. like the, uh, uh, it is like the prestigious uh, world battle. If you're a battle turntablist, this is where you go. Um, and the man has won like, I think five consecutive, so much so that Wild. at a point uh, he like backed away until somebody breaks his record. Uh, um, uh, he, he just like bowed out. Um, DJ Craze, um, when uh, it wasn't even Serato yet, they weren't a, a company. It was Stanton had a uh, was probably one of the first people to bring it to market with something called Scratch or I think it was Scratch Live or something like that. Don't probably I don't remember what it is. And he, I remember following him and going, uh, "This is like top secret stuff. I can't share what it is yet, but it's going to change the game." And then when he unveiled it. Um, just him totally embracing it and seeing what he could do through my teenage eyes just blew my mind. Like, uh, like, oh wow, this has just changed your landscape to get even uh, to 10x your creativity. And that's what I see with AI right now is, and you know, there is a little bit of uh, controversy on what it's gonna do within uh, the legal legalities of everything and music and the rights of that. And with that, I say, you know, usually the music industry is the first industry to get hit hard by tech anyway. Like uh, we've seen it with Napster. We've seen it with like uh, um, uh, copyright infringement, right. all sort of, or sort of things. But um, for me, DJing has always been about 
taking the world of music and mashing it into uh, a a cohesive thing that pulls many different emotions uh, out of your listeners, right? And um, and that's what gets me excited about DJing, and why I'm still excited about like this idea of what AI is gonna, how that's gonna interplay with everything. So, yeah, um, that I I'm I'm for it. I don't know what what it's gonna do. I don't know where we're gonna sit, and but we're gonna have to have some conversations about it. I'm sure, and I'm still totally excited about it all. Yeah, it's like the cycle repeats itself. Like you said, when when CDJs came out, it was the same conversation. Oh, it's gonna ruin things. What's gonna happen? But like we said, having a CDJ or, or more of a computerized DJ system takes away the basics that you have to worry about. So then you can focus on the creativity. And I think AI will do the same thing. It'll take away probably what we know now is like the majority of DJing, but who knows what's going to open up next. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew back then what a CDJ would allow you to do. Mm-hmm. So when AI hits, like we, we can't even fathom what we're going to be able to do. I mean, you just think a thought and then you have a song now. Like maybe that happens. I don't know. We're going to see what, but like, have you seen some of the AI stuff like I've seen this on Instagram where they'll take a song and then completely change the genre of it with like mm-hmm. the old lyrics. So when it was like WAP, mm-hmm. but it was sung as like a 1920s, <laughs> uh, like Bob, jingle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that 100% is the kind of stuff that excites me about mm-hmm. what we can do. Like, I mean, we can interpolate some like France Sinatra singing WAP, right? Right. Like, um, and you know, I, I can't remember who said it. Like what a DJ I admired said something to the effect of, and uh, this is where I'll age myself and fully disclose. I'm <laughs> I'm 42. Um, you know, like a day over 30. Why? Thank you. I'm almost 40. So uh, don't, don't, awesome. Don't, Team don't 40, sweat, 40 Club. <laughs> um, you know, you're old, but you're not old. Thank you. I don't feel old, and DJing certainly makes me feel young again. Um, Play is super important. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and you know. What excites me the most about DJing over, uh, like I said, guitars, I've been playing guitar longer than anything and it's still uh, my instrument of choice. Um, But what keeps me excited about DJing based on what this person says is DJing is the one um, uh, art form as a musician or skill where you literally get better as you age, right? Because, as you take in the world around you, like, like, you know, quoting like Rick Rubin here, you're an input vessel for the world and creativity is your output from your lens. Um, as you get older, you get exposed to more decades and era of music. And, uh, I also had a friend tell me, uh, this quote that you don't find music, music finds you mm. at the right time. Totally. Right. Like I remember, it wasn't until like I was in high school where I was like, well, Led Zeppelin is the fucking coolest band in the world. And why did it take me to this song to like, like discover that mm-hmm. and not make fun of all the old dudes wearing the shirts. Right. Um, uh, and I feel like that still, like, as I get more into DJing, I'm like discovering various styles, genres, yeah. having friends over. And then it's just making my brain and palette of what you can do with, the idea of DJing and now we have AI to help assist us. It's like game over, you know? Yeah. Like, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Awesome, man. I fucking love that. I love Mm -hmm. that too. I think your brain changes over the years to be more receptive to different music as well. Like you could hear, you could hear free bird (laughs) when you're, 10 and not care here when you're 17 and not care here when you're 20 and not care here when you're 40 and we're like this song fucks it's super hard <laughs> yeah and it's, it's, so it's like not until a certain point in your life where someone's like no listen to this <laughs> like really go on the journey and sometimes it's, it's almost like you need like a shaman it's like that's why i love going to shows with someone who has a love for a a, a genre but I, you don't know necessarily very well because they can help hook you into it Mm-hmm. Where if like you don't, you may necessarily like miss it. You need the person like they're like feeling it and they're taking you on the journey. You're like, mm-hmm. oh shit, now now I'm not, now I understand what's happening, right? And I, I like uh, it's funny you guys bringing that up. I I feel like I uh, I've had the, uh, those various moments exactly what you're touching on. Like uh, you've heard this song when you're ten and it doesn't mean anything, and then you hear it like later on. Uh, um, yeah, that 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 song, uh, the Beatles song Blackbird, uh-huh. like. Like it's the most stripped down 
like versions of a, of a of a song from the Beatles, the most popular pop band in the world, right? And that's I remember just being in the moment where I was receptive enough to like hear every chord and strum on the acoustic guitar. It touched my heart along with the vocals and the lyrics and just going, oh, this is making me cry right now. It's like touching me in a way it never had before. And then, you know, hearing like a, a, a Beyonce's interpretation of that on her new album mm -hmm. and going, I don't know, maybe it's because we're the same age or something that she is like, she was on the same br uh, brainwave with me. But I was like, man, I would cover that song one day, but she just did. I, I'm not going to take that away from her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That. Well, last thing, man. Obviously, you've been so deep in the music scene for so long, and there's so many aspiring musicians, whether they're guitarists or pianists or violinists or cellists or DJs or producers. What advice would you give to younger aspiring DJs that are getting into this scene now? Um, take your time. Um, I feel like we live in a world where, and I see, th feel like this specifically from being a, a musician for over two decades that now that we have a social media in the mix and like, um, which is amazing because it allows us to have exposure to the entire world, um, of what it is we do or want to create. Um, and there, uh, there are no longer those barriers in front of us and how we get our music out to the world. Um, however, I think like we, we there's this, uh, I know I feel that pressure of like this need that we have to like be perfect, be the best. And then, um, continuously like feed that algorithm of what we're doing. But, um, even I, I, and I'm guilty of like having a wall full of like musicians that I admire that are like, that I'm here and they're up there and I'm like, man, they're so great. Uh, I never get to where they are, but it's, they, they're lots more hours where the camera is not on. And I think that when I like, just remember why I do this and I'm just doing it to like hone my skill and my craft and enjoy and just have fun. Um, and that, that takes time and it's just a journey the more i lean into that and respect it like this is my form of daily meditation the uh better i feel as a musician and i think like uh for anyone aspiring and learning like you have to respect that journey like you're not going to be uh i don't know an eddie van halen overnight or uh, even though you're seeing some 16 year old kid shred on online or whatever like um and his, how people get to there and their journey can look very different when the camera's off so just go on your journey enjoy it you don't have to feed the algorithm um with what you're doing yeah fuck the algorithm yeah mm -hmm. yeah fuck the algorithm hashtag fuck the algorithm yeah 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 um, but yeah, that's super solid advice. I think we were just at an event, like a podcast networking event and it talked to like some of the younger people there, like twenties and they're like, you know, you can see in their brain, they're so stressed out. Like I need to be somewhere so fast and, and I need to like, and they're just looking at everybody and there's all those people that, you know, you pop up in your face, that are overnight successes or whatever. It's like, dude, you got to put blinders on. Yeah. That gets in your head. And you got to stop doing it. You got to do it because you like, you love it. It's cool if it does other things, but it's gotta be, it's gotta be an art form. Something you're just like, I just love to do it and I want to keep doing it because I can't, I can't think about other things. Like I just would do this regardless if there was a camera or I posted or anything. Yeah. And, and, and even for people in our age demographic, um, I'll whoa, see. whoa, whoa, keep me out of this. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're coming, buddy. I'm youthful. All right. I, I did point his way. Not okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, um, the master's category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the geriatric, uh, the senior menu, the, uh, well, well aged and ripened. Yeah. Aged just, like the, a fine wine. All right, just a little side quest for a second. I think it'd be really interesting to talk about like what it means to be the different ages right now in history, because it's like really different. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you're experiencing it, you're like, 
I don't understand what this is. Because when I saw, when I was a little kid and you saw someone like, you heard 40, you were like, button up shirt, dude, like dad shoes, socks. Like you were just like, people just looked at you like a straight, like dad vibe, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, I don't think, I feel like I've just 20, like 30s. I'm like, this is 30s part two. And that is, that's kind of exactly what I, uh, I was getting ready to touch on. And I had oh, my, <laughs> I, I, I have, I've had in my own journey of like, what the fuck are you doing? You're 40 and like DJing out at a, I got a serious with life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you left your, uh, uh, job, uh, st stability at, uh, you know, well reputable tech company, like in to what DJ and do creative fun stuff. Like, yeah. Left Apple of 15 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and amongst that, I'm doing a, a lot, a lot of, uh, things, not just for myself, like helping other businesses with my creative skills and, uh, both audio and video media. Um, but I, I've had that little existential crisis, uh, sometime where I'm reflecting and thinking about that, but you know what? I also have had conversations with people within our age demographic where they're, where they see the social media and, and we'll say that, man, it's a kid's world. And, uh, I was pursuing like trying to learn and DJ more, but now that I see like, you know, uh, uh, all, everyone else on social media and they're like, I'm just giving it, giving up. And I'm like, that sounds like you cutting off a limb of your body. Mm -hmm. body. Yeah, dude. Do you know Desert Hearts? Um, no, I'm not familiar. Super old school DJ. Well, he's probably like 70 now, 65, mm -hmm. 70. Mm -hmm. He was playing at Eclipse and he plays, I've seen it at a ton of festivals and he's just, he's old. Like you look at him, you're like, that's an old guy, but he's wearing like a flowery button up shirt, just throwing down nasty house beats. Yeah. Like that's a good life right there. You don't have to, if, if you ever think, oh, I'm too old to DJ or too old to do something I'm passionate about, fuck it. Desert Hearts is out there playing Burning Man, playing huge music festivals at the ripe age of 70 and years this old. And this is, this is, this is, I think touches on a bunch of stuff that maybe we all relate on. It's like, this is one of the keys to staying like your spirit youthful. Mm -hmm. It's like your spirit's like a candle, right? And it's like, if you do the things that are fun and like, if, if no one's watching and you were just a little kid playing, what would you fucking do? And then, yeah, people get these programs in their head of like, oh no, or I'm this or I'm that. It's like, dude, what, what the fuck ever? What, what, who are the top 10 DJs in the world? The highest paid DJs right now? Highest? Highest paid Tiesto. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. one of them. Um, yep. Armin. Mm -hmm. Like his whole empire of stuff. It's mm -hmm. true. All, all you have to do is think of a who bus. has a residency in Vegas. Those are all yeah. Right. yeah. There, you right? there you go. Tiesto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Cascade. He has a res residency in Vegas. I think so. Um, it's been a while since I've like thought about that. But yeah, like those top guys. I'll just rattle off three. Yeah. Diplo, Skrillex. Oh yeah. Dead Mouse. Um, they're all my age. My yeah, age demographic. For sure. Yeah. Right. So like, I don't, I don't. And I'm not here that claiming that I'm even anywhere near their level, but, um, like to see like Diplo and Burning Man, like being him, his authentic self and taking in life at, at that age. And like, I was watching a set with Skrillex on YouTube playing in his garage is like the best thing in the world mm -hmm. to me. And I was like, you, you, you don't have to be on a stage to their level to like, um, really, uh, like, embrace your passion and do it. And, and, I, and I, that's what I would say to anybody in our age demographic out there. Like, bro, like, you, you know, everybody's out on this kick of finding your third thing, like mm -hmm. play unashamedly in your living room. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's, Fuck yeah. 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 So where can people find you? How do they find Sunday sessions? Uh, Shout out. Uh, yeah. So, um, YouTube, of course, if you search King Carey, uh, and my name, by the way, it's, it's uniquely spelled. It's of Swahili descent. So it's K H A R Y. So King C Carey or Kari, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, and, um, I am working right now on, uh, on having a lot more of a digital presence on all social media platforms, but the one I'm on the most frequently right now is Instagram. So just King dot Carey. And yeah, uh, keep, keep in tune. You'll find all my links there of what I'm working on. Um, uh, also recently launched my own creative media business. Um, you know, really giving a platform since I'm doing this right now for your DJing, but I, I also, uh, have a passion for the, uh, 
uh, entrepreneur, small business, um, anything that I can do with media to give those businesses a voice to, um, I'm here for. So, yeah, I mean, we got merch coming, so we could do some creative ads together. Yeah, yeah man. We'd be, we'd be down. Sunday sessions in the Two Fun Guys merch. It's coming yeah. soon. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you being here, man. Yeah, yeah man. Thanks for yeah, coming, you man. for having me. Yeah. That was That's an awesome time. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right.